two critical governor's races with the Republicans sending a strong message to Democrats ahead of the 2022 midterm elections. So let's talk about how all of this will play out with ABC News contributor, CEO at Code for America and national political director for the 2016 Clinton campaign, Amanda Renteria. Also ABC News contributor, staff writer for the Dispatch and Department of Justice official during the Trump administration, Sarah Isker, both joining us now with their take. Whew, both of you have quite the resumes. I had to get it all in there. <laughs> Sarah, let's start with you. The Virginia Department of Elections reporting that this election had the highest turnout rate for a gubernatorial race since 1993. Clearly, education and curriculum fears created a path to victory here with parents playing a dominant role in this race. Uh, there's no question that school board moms are the new soccer moms when it comes to a voting block. But I think the Democrats would be making a mistake to look too carefully at the critical race theory part of this. There was enormous frustration over schools being closed, especially in Fairfax County, where the vast majority, the largest uh, plurality of Virginia voters live. Uh, those schools were closed through 2021, uh, despite the science, despite what other school districts across the country were doing. Uh, there was frustration about a school uh, super superintendent lying about a sexual assault for political reasons. But most importantly, it was Terry McAuliffe saying, I don't think parents should have a say in what schools teach their children. Um, that wasn't really about critical race theory. That was about an attitude about the role parents play in their students' lives and their children's lives. And when you asked in the exit polls uh, what parents thought about that, it was a total wipeout for Terry McAuliffe, and you saw white suburban women move 15 points from where they were with Joe Biden just a year ago. Well, I can tell you, I, I live in the state of Virginia, and um, it was really frustrating for us because we moved to our area specifically for the public schools, and the kids just couldn't get back in school, so we had to actually put them in a private school. So as a parent, this was a really, really tough time, um, and education definitely was on our neighborhood's minds for sure. Amanda, you know, this defeat for Democrats, it was a blow in a state where Biden beat Trump by 10 points. Do you believe what happened in Virginia foreshadows big losses for Democrats in next year's midterms now? I, I do think there is a very big lesson for everyone here. Um, but first to put it in context, uh, history would tell us this is how Democrats should feel the morning after when when you have the White House. It also is history to tell us that the midterm elections will also feel like this unless Democrats do something different. And coming out for me as I look through all the different exit polls, the conversations that were happening, we cannot as Democrats forget that all politics are local, particularly when you're talking about midterms and special elections. What is happening at the kitchen table matters. So all the conversation around education is right. Um, Democrats missed that. Terry McAuliffe missed that. There was a whole conversation that we were running a 2020 race talking about Trump. You simply cannot do that in special elections, in midterms. You've got to be talking about the issue that is uh, around kitchen tables where the intensity is. The second thing I'll just mention is that if you actually want to buck historic trends, you have to have a historic ground operation. You have to have communications distribution. It has to look and feel different if you want something, uh, a different kind of outcome. That's a lesson for the midterms. If we do exactly what we've done, we'll end up here the morning after midterms. Unless you start to see a real change in the kinds of things we're talking about, we should have been talking about things like the child tax credit that actually does affect people and help you in terms of being able to make that investment in a private sector, uh, in a private sector school if you have to, or if you need to get extra care if you have to. But that's not what happened in this race, and that's the lesson I take away: is we got to get back to that kitchen table. And do things differently, as you point out. Sarah, did you want to weigh in? Uh, just one other point on the education factor. And Kira, I, I think your experience is exactly what so many women in the state of Virginia felt. I'm also a Virginia voter and a mom. And when we look at what this pandemic did to the economy, it was women who were being forced to leave the workforce because they didn't have 
schools to send their children to. And so they were then left to take care of these children. Enormous frustration over that. And now you have inflation. And so to try to separate out these issues of, oh, it's the economy, oh, it's education, they're actually very linked in Virginia and across the country when you think about the midterms. And if Democrats lose suburban women, the very things that they took from Republicans when Trump came into office, uh, that they will not be able to hold the House for sure and the Senate probably gone as well. So, Amanda, then you point out that Dems have to do something differently. Could do you do you agree with Sarah that you've got to go over the, go for those suburban moms who had a tremendous influence influence uh, in Virginia? I think you do need to do both and. We need to ne ne definitely reach out to those suburban moms, but we also need to make sure that we're firing up the base. Black and Latino voters need to be coming out. Young voters need to be excited. And in order to do that, you gotta meet people where they are. It's time for Democrats to pass, build back better, and most importantly, to talk about what that means in people's lives. The infrastructure bill matters for those jobs that Sarah's talking about. Child tax credit matters, Ch preschool matters for those, for those moms at home that are wondering what to do with their kids. That's the kind of now year Democrats need to have as we move forward, and they have a platform to do it. They are leading right now, they are in charge right now. So it's important to pass it, and then to have the kind of communications efforts to talk about uh, what's happening to folks around the kitchen table right now. All right, let's talk about what's happening in New Jersey. Sarah, neither candidate has conceded on what very much looks like a tie at the moment. If Democratic losses continue here, could we see Donald Trump running for the White House in 2024? I think we'll see Donald Trump claim credit for all of this, regardless of whether he deserves the credit for all of it. In fact, you saw the Republican National Committee chair, for some reason, say that Virginia was clearly a referendum on Donald Trump. Uh, very strange political tact there from the RNC. Um, I think Donald Trump is almost certainly running in 2024, barring some, you know, act of God. Um, whether this <laughs> actually was voters saying, without Trump on the ballot, we like the Republican Party, or maybe more to the point and more to what Amanda's saying, we don't like what the Democrats are doing. They've moved too far to the left. They're in power in both houses of Congress and the presidency, and they're not doing anything. Uh, this will be the most expensive Christmas ever. Gas prices are through the roof. Food prices are crazy at the grocery store. Things aren't there in the grocery store because of supply chain issues. Um, on the flip side, I hope Republicans learn something Virginia, as you said, had record high turnout. And yet we see Republicans trying to limit voting across the country. High turnout isn't bad for Republicans. And high turnout doesn't guarantee a Democratic victory. So what would a Democratic victory look like, uh, Amanda? Uh, final word here. You hear uh, Sarah say, oh, yeah, no matter what, we're going to see Trump running in 2024. Uh, my guess is that is going to energize Democrats in a very different way uh, to hit this hard. Yeah, but that's a long way away. We got midterms. And so it's really important to understand what's happening on the ground to build the kind of ground game where you are building community and empowering the community. And you're talking about the issues that people are talking about in their homes, worried about in their homes, and you're doing something. So no doubt the message here is Democrats have to deliver and talk about it in a way that is meeting people where they are. Amanda and Sarah, I know we will be talking a lot in the coming months and years, all the way to 2024. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate the conversation. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.